OnePlus just revealed its newest OS update, Oxygen OS 15. And while it's not available to the public yet, I have the beta installed on my trusty OnePlus 12. And it's pretty neat. So let's see what OnePlus is about to do to your phone. Now overall, this update based on Android 15 is meant to do three things. Update the design so, you know, it's prettier. Include some AI and safety features so smarter. And improve the performance so faster. So let's start off with some of the interface improvements, which is what you're going to see right off the top. If we just jump into settings right now and go to wallpapers and styles, you'll see right up at the very top, flux themes. This is a new part of Oxygen OS. I'm going to go ahead and tap into more themes. And you see the things that we're used to seeing. If you scroll down a little bit further, you start to see some of the newer additions, inclusions into this section. And some of them, you know, they include uh, some phrases and stuff, which you can sort of customize. It says text style, but there's no way to like be like, I like that style, but I want it to say something different. It's just dare to be different. Okay, I gotta keep that, but I'm not going to because I don't like that. If some of these speak to you, great. But what I find interesting here is if we go into this one right here, we've got a picture of a dog. I happen to have a picture of my own dog that I uh, really like and think will work well here, Bronson. There it is, this is gonna look awesome. I'm gonna go ahead and accept that. And you can see all I had to do was select the image and it immediately knew how to mat out around the subject of the image, in this case, my dog Bronson. And from there, I can kind of reposition, I can shift it around. If I grow t the image too large, it doesn't know how to pop it out of the bounds of what we're looking at. So you kind of have to find the right space for it. Um, there we go. And then this depth button down at the bottom is what actually activates the popping out that you see there. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply this. Now from here, we are able to jump into something called one take. And this is essentially a smooth transition from the screen off with the always on display on. That's what you see there with Bronson on the always on display. I tap that, it wakes it up and we see kind of a larger version of it, which is what we we're playing with. And then when I unlock and go to the main screen, it reveals the entire image uh, as it was in the original. So it's kind of like this seamless process. You've got your always on display, boop, and it kind of reveals into the home screen. It's kind of a cool little effect if you follow the three-step process. That is one plus one take. We've got open canvas. What is that? So I'm gonna go ahead and jump into Gmail and I'm gonna go to my multitasking screen and split the screen. And what is the app that I wanna split with? Go into photos. So now on the top is my Gmail app. On the bottom is my photos app. There's nothing new. We've had this for quite a while, but this is actually really cool. If I go ahead and reply to this email to the Daily Tech News Show and I tap and hold my photos button, it gives me inside of the email the ability to drag, drop, and what do you know, that email now has the attachment of my dog Bronson laying on the floor next to me here in the studio. Other than that, you've got your standard approach to these OS updates is to make things just a little bit prettier and some of the animations a little bit more enjoyable. If I, you know, plug in the phone to get it charging, you'll see, you know, OnePlus often does this kind of like animation around, but now we're seeing this like ripple effect going through everything in the background. And pretty much, you know, when you're jumping through all the different places, you get these nice fluid animations that just kind of pop up and settle into place. Another part of this is a feature that we're starting to see come to more Android phones and possibly even a major Android OS update in the future, which is the splitting of the notification shade uh, for your notifications and your quick settings bar. Now in settings within Oxygen OS 15, you can determine which way you want it. Do you want them integrated into each other the way the legacy systems have done, or do you want it split? And essentially what that means is if I swipe down from the left-hand side, I get my notification. If I swipe down from the right-hand side, I get my quick settings. And so this is, uh, this is definitely a trend. It's coming to more phones, OnePlus hopping on board with that right out of the gate with Oxygen OS 
15. What's so much smarter about Oxygen OS 15? I'm a fan of all things AI and kind of seeing how this is developing. OnePlus was a little late to get on the AI bandwagon with their AI eraser earlier this year, and they've improved that feature set with the AI toolkit, and now they're expanding upon that with Oxygen OS 15. It's always fun to start off with the camera when we're talking about AI on smartphones, just because that's where a lot of people, you know, use AI most on their mobile devices. So we're gonna go ahead and go into the OnePlus Photos app in order to illustrate this. I'm gonna pull up this photo from way back in the year 2000, the one and only year that I ever went to Burning Man. Go into AI Editor, and we've got this AI Detail Boost. This is meant to upscale your images to 4K quality, or so it's labeled. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap that. You can see that it's processing the image. Now all of this happens in the cloud it's not happening on the device. So it sent that image to the cloud, processed it, brought it back down. And now you can see that things are a little bit clearer. I'm just gonna go really tight just to, com just to compare. This is before, this is after. It's an AI sharpening that is integrated on the device. I think the funny thing is though that this device takes <laughs> very high res photos. So if you're taking something on the device, probably have less use for this. I had to go digging to find a photo uh, that would make it useful. Now next in the AI toolkit for photos is unblur. So this image, if you go in, you can kind of see it's a, it's a little fuzzy. It didn't quite capture my image here in the studio very sharply. So I'm gonna go ahead and edit, AI editor, AI unblur, again, sending it to the cloud in order to do all the processing off device. So it's not happening on your device. Once it comes back, which doesn't take that long, I can go ahead and zoom in. It's still a little fuzzy, but I will say it definitely did kind of sharpen things. At least in the foreground, you can see the, the uh, ukulele that I have in the background was in focus prior because that was the focus point for the original image. And now it's out of focus with the foreground becoming a little bit sharper. So it's not like drastic, but it definitely does improve things. And then finally go to this image. I'm standing, taking a picture of myself through a reflective window. And this feature here in AI editor called AI reflection eraser is actually pretty neat. Again, happening in the cloud, not happening on device, so you gotta be okay with the fact that it's sending it over, it's removing reflections, it's going to come back, and voila, I mean, that did actually a really great job. This is before, this is after, it was able to remove the reflections and make that image that I <laughs> will probably trash after I record this video somewhat salvageable. Of course, you do have circle to search, so if I tap and hold on the home button and then I circle anything on the screen, it will just fire off a search. You can see I circled the, the Authy logo and it pulled back a bunch of <laughs> YouTube results for Authy videos. So that's kind of nice to have here. I love circle to search, it's an excellent feature. AI notes, here I have just a random note that I pasted in here. And now down at the bottom is this little button, this toolkit of AI features. If I tap that, then I get AI assistant for notes. So this allows me to do things like formatting it. So I'm taking that note, sending it off uh, into the cloud for formatting, but it does take a little bit of time. You can see it's a very slow printout. I could actually stop that midway if I wanted to and refine it if I want to shorten the output of it. I can do that within the Notes app and it'll take a second, it'll churn on it, and it'll go ahead and give me a shorter output. And then, yeah, sure, we'll go ahead and replace it. And poof, it inserts in everything on top of what I had before. And finally, of course, you've got Google Gemini on board. You can replace the Google Assistant for when you hold down the power button for it to fire off uh, Gemini instead of the Assistant if you prefer. And yeah, you've got the app on there. You can start using Google's Gemini for a whole host of things, Gemini Live, voice queries. If you've got a paid Gemini account, you can use Gemini to search your cloud documents inside of Google, that sort of stuff. AI Toolbox 2.0 with AI Reply. Now this has to do with the smart 
sidebar, if I'm in Gmail right now and I do the smart sidebar, I get some advanced features here, AI summary, AI speak, AI writer, also going to be uh, getting some smart res message responses up there in a future device. And then coming to a future device, again, probably the OnePlus 13 intelligent search, which is essentially used with the cloud and on device to do natural language search across your apps on the phone. So that's the settings, the files app, the notes app, and kind of doing some of what Gemini does in the cloud from Google, but this time on your device, thanks to intelligent search. And finally, security features. If we go into settings and go into security, and device unlock, we now have the ability to activate theft protection. So theft detection lock essentially will lock that screen if the algorithms on the device can recognize that a phone was just snapped out of someone's hand and then they're like running. It's really interesting how Google has done that. So you can have that behavior happen right off the top. Uh, you can also activate offline device lock. So if someone steals the phone and then immediately tries to disconnect it from the internet so it doesn't call home and then wipe out if you recognize it and you send a, a call to your phone to, to wipe uh, and erase the device because it's been stolen. This on will automatically lock the device shortly after a, a specific amount of time that it's been offline. So it does it automatically. Not only that, if we go into settings and security and app security, we get Play Protect, Google Play Protect, that's just constantly scanning your device for bad actors, bad apps that are installed. And uh, that's just a nice extra thing to have on there as well. Now, finally, faster, right? Performance enhancements, parallel processing, which is an improved animation rendering system, which you will find system wide when you're kind of navigating through these animations that happen aren't going to perceivably slow down the experience. Things will just happen a lot quicker. And then if I start opening and swiping to return to the home and just continue doing that, you see over time, things never really slow down. Things don't get jittery. Everything seems pretty smooth. Overall, what you'll notice also is that the OS takes up far less of your storage than before. It's just eight gigs, at least on my phone. I've seen it as low as 7.3. OnePlus says about a 20% reduction in system storage compared to Oxygen OS 14. And then finally, if you wanna share files between Oxygen OS 15 and an iPhone, well, now you can do that because OnePlus has included the ability, we can just go ahead into settings, and we can go to connection and sharing and share with iPhone. And we have to activate that. And there's a whole host of permissions that you have to turn on in order to do that. It starts a timer of 10 minutes that the open sharing kind of portal will be open. You do have to install the O Connect app on your iPhone in order to do this cross device transfer. So you install that on your iPhone, activate that, and you can share easily from the sharing context menu on your device running uh, Oxygen OS 15. Files move over seamlessly from there. And that is the new Oxygen OS 15 coming next week to potentially your OnePlus 12 device uh, on October 30th. So a day earlier than Halloween, happy Halloween. Beyond that, certainly appearing on the next OnePlus 13 device, which is expected to be revealed at an event that's taking place next week. So it's all happening, right? Do me a favor, if you got value from this video, please hit the like button and while you're at it, you know, push that subscribe button. I will for sure be doing reviews coverage of the OnePlus 13. I would hate for you to miss it, especially if you made it this far. And if you like the device that I've been using here, the OnePlus 12, definitely do not miss my review of the OnePlus 12. I took it to Italy actually and did the review from there. So don't miss that video. Just click the link and you'll watch it. You are an awesome person. Thank you so much for keeping me company today. I'll see you in the next video. Bye everybody. Bye everybody.